Hi, I'm Christopher Marlin, Snowflake Solutions Architect here at Aimpoint Digital, and also a Snowflake Data Superhero. Now, in 1992, when Adobe introduced the PDF, they probably weren't aware that they were ruining the lives of data engineers and data professionals all over the world. If you've ever tried to extract data from a PDF, you're very aware of the pain that I am talking about. Luckily, the years of pain have come to an end. Snowflake have introduced Document AI. With Document AI, you can leverage Snowflake's uh, OCR technology with their proprietary LLM to extract very easily data from PDFs and other types of unstructured data. What you can do is you can train a Document AI model and then call that model in SQL allowing you to actually integrate document AI within your normal everyday queries, your ingestion pipelines, and whatever other use case you have for extracting unstructured data in code. Now, obviously you're very excited, so I think it's time to get going. So the first place we need to start is just uh, going to the security aspect. So as you can imagine, People are not happy about the idea that just anybody could deploy document AI models. They are not expensive, but are cost, you know, more cost intensive than your average select star query. And for that reason, you need your account admin to grant a, uh, grant a role in order for you to be able to use document AI. Now, what the actual grant is, is a grant of a database role which if you're not familiar with the concept of a database role, um, it's essentially just like any other role, um, except it's very, very specific to the database within which it exists. Um, so with a database role, you can't you know, grant things to, to that role out with the database that it belongs to. So a lot of the AI and ML functionality that Snowflake is introducing it belongs within the Snowflake database. This is the database that is shared into your account as you begin in Snowflake. Um, this has a database role, which is called the Document Intelligence Creator. So um, what you need to do to begin with is um, using the account admin role, um, you grant database role, snowflake.documentintelligencecreator. Because it is a database role, I need to prefix the name with the database within which it belongs. And, and I'm going to give that to my role um, because this is uh, being done in the Sandbox account where we all have our individual role. Obviously, that's not going to be how your account works in a proper business setting, um, but that's not you know, too important right now. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that my role has that power. Uh, that's executed successfully, so now I can move on. Okay, so from here, on this little side of it, I'm going to go to Documents AI. I'm just going to click Build here, and then Build Name. So with the data we're playing with here, we've got a few invoices, um, and we're trying to pass the values from those invoices, you know, line items, all that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to call this Invoice doc AI and the location will be my database uh, demos don't need a description for now I don't think uh, let's just hit create and that will churn and churn okay so on successful completion of that creation you'll have a screen that looks a bit like this I'm going to click Upload Documents. This is where I'm going to do some, some training here. Now I'm going to drag my 20 invoices and upload those for you. Um, again, I'm going to pause the video because there's a processing step and this will take um, you know, a little bit of time. Um, so I'm going to pause this video so that we, uh, well, I don't make you suffer through that board. Okay, so that's now completed. So let's look at see all the documents. And you can see we've got a bit of work, a review here. So I'm just gonna click on one of these. 
and you see here, okay, so we have my, my company, point A materials, and I want to get all of these values out. I want to see things like invoice date, invoice number, reference, all of these descriptions, not just one, but the lot, you know, again, again, again. So to do this, I need to add a value. So first off, customer. So that's going to be down here, this customer, Fisher, Hughes, and Hernandez. What I need to provide is a natural language question. So let's think, um, who is the customer this invoice is being sent to? Okay, let's see if that works, hopefully it will. Um, if not, then, you know, this is very good, so it's probably my fault, um, that's, not, that's not very good. Let's have a think, let's have a think about it, so. Great, okay, Fisher, Hughes, and Hernandez. You can see here it's given itself a score of 0 0.66, it's confidence score. Actually did a very good job, so you know I've confirmed it. it's now uh, one. It's hundred percent. Okay, so we're gonna keep going like this. So due date. Um, what is the due date on this invoice? Okay, let's see how it does. Sixteenth of June, twenty twenty. Four, and yet there we are. So that's correct. Uh, now let's say invoice date. What is the invoice date? Nice and simple. Ask that question. While it's going, I'm just going to do invoice number. What is the invoice number? To see this date is correct, I'm going to tick that. As I tick that, it's now going ahead. So I'm going to go with reference. Uh, what is the reference? Uh, tick that. It's doing very well here. Okay, yep. Yeah. Ref zero one. 15, brilliant, okay. So we're looking quite good here. What I'll do is I'll pause the video to fill out a bit more of this. But what I wanna just show you is uh, how we approach our line items, okay? So let's start with description. I'm just gonna phrase this in a plural. I think that's a very good way of making sure that uh, it knows to expect multiple values here. So what are the descriptions? of the line items in this invoice. Let's see if that works. With any luck, we will have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I'm counting that correct. Um, okay, here we are. Durable Trencher T90, yep, yeah, Precision Asphalt Paver. Durable Trencher, Precision Asphalt Paver, another one. Compact Skid Steer Loader, um, yeah, okay. So you can see it's done a very good job there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause the video as I put in more of these values. Um, so you're not you're not too bored, but I, I, we probably want this to be it, okay? So I'm gonna pause the video and just get that done. Okay, so I've now finished filling this out. Um, one little change I did make is I just changed the description to line and description, I think that uh, just adds a little bit of clarity here. Um, but everything's come through, it was all correct the first time. Um, so let's see what it's like uh, with the next one. What you will see is it already has all these values, so you don't need to redo all that. Um, it's gonna process them all, try again with the next, um, and then you can just kind of accept on bulk. So the first one is a little bit tedious, everything after is, is much easier. So customer, um, that one is not correct, unfortunately. So I'm just going to change that. So day Anderson, um, the due date, uh, 25th. Yeah, that's correct. The invoice date, that's correct. So everything else seems to be completely correct. Just that one thing. Okay, so that's great. Yeah, all lining up. So accept and review next. 
Um, let's see what happens with customer. Processing your question, just needs a bit of time to think. Again, point aim, so we just need to correct that. So Saunders Alter. Okay, so accept review next. With some luck, this next one might uh, gate right, but you never know. Um, might need a little bit of prompting and then eventually I'll realize actually, no, it's not at the top, it's, it's at the bottom. But you know, this is the reason why they ask for 20. So we've got a very decent amount of training data. Um, so this one doesn't actually, it's on the next page. Uh, yeah, it's Torres LLC. Um, so again, um, it's just the one value we're having a bit of an issue with. Hopefully by the end it should um, get the idea, but we'll see. Is this is this one going to be the lucky one? Is it fingers crossed, fingers crossed? There we are. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video as I go through and verify all of these. Um, you know, if you're following along, please do the same. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll come back and we can look at actually using this. Okay, so here I am on the last invoice. What you might notice is I actually changed the question for customer. Um, it wasn't giving me the result that I wanted most of the time. So I changed that question, just said, who is the customer for this invoice? Um, as soon as I did that, it gave a much better result. So the learning there really is, is if you're getting a consistently bad answer, do try rephrasing the question and see if um, changing it actually does improve the result. Um, in this case, it, it definitely did. So I reviewed all those documents and now they are all accepted. Um, look at the values, you can see uh, what I've got here. Obviously, customer, the accuracy isn't looking great because of that. Hopefully, that's not too much of an issue. Um, and over here, so the build details, we have a description of the model accuracy here. I'm going to publish this version. That's going to make it accessible in my SQL statements. Um, so here I am, and I've got a little bit of um, helpful code to begin with. It's great. Okay, so what I want to do is just also show you um, how to create a stage. Now you may know if you've used Snowflake how to create a stage, there's just some things I want to point out. So even if you are an experienced Snowflake developer, please just don't skip this bit. Um, I'm just gonna do create um, stage in Snowflake Managed. Um, if you prefer the SQL, I'll show you the SQL in a minute. Um, but I just wanna show this visually for now. Uh, so I'm gonna call this doc AI stage. Uh, this directory table here I want to be enabled and it's very important that server-side encryption is ticked. And so in SQL this is going to look like you know, create stage, .ai stage, directory equals brackets, enable equals true, encryption equals brackets, type equals snowflake underscore SSE. You will not be able to, to do the rest of the video if you've not done those two things. Um, so that's just why I wanted to draw some attention to it. Okay, let's carry on. So the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that I didn't actually press the create button in that previous step. Um, and you know the reason is just that uh, I'd already created it and I'd already preloaded everything, um, as you can see, four days ago. Um, if you look in the description in the link, uh, well, you look in the description, there is a link um, and that, has two, well, there's two links. One is to that training data we've already used, and the second link is to the uh, the data that we're actually um, going to try and ingest and transform. And there's 50 PDFs here. If you have not, you know, just plus files um, and just drop those PDFs in here and upload them. Okay, so now we're going to actually use some SQL. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just have a little look at uh, our stage. So let's do select relative path as file name from directory and then got our stage name, which is .ai stage. If you're not familiar with the concept of a, uh, 
a directory table. Basically, it is just in tabular format, a directory of the files in a stage. Nice and easy to understand there. Um, so that looks like what we want. That's what we saw in the last section of the video. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the model. So that's invoice underscore doc underscore AI, exclamation mark, predict. Okay, great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do get pre-signed URL. Um, yeah, pre-signed URL, very useful if you're about to take your Snow Pro core exam, you'd be asked on this. Um, basically, you feed it in a stage, a relative path within that stage, and give you a pre-signed URL. That's a kind of like URL with which you can access that file itself. Okay, so I want to give the name of the stage, which is that doc AI stage, and then relative path. Okay, and then the next thing I just need to do um, is just give the version of the model. So if I was to you know go back and, and change things up with V two, we've only got one version, so I'm just putting in one. Thing. Okay, so let's run this. Um, I suspect it'll take um, a little bit of time, at least uh, enough time for you to get bored. So I'm just going to pause the video and wait for that to execute. Okay, so that has now run. Um, and this is, you can see what we get. Um, so we get our values, you know, customer, due date, invoice date, etc., with the score and the value score. So representing the confidence um, from zero to one. So we're going to want to do a little bit of transformation with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, alias this um, as extracted value. Um, and I'll just rerun this, so pause the video again um, and show you what that transformation can look like. Okay, so now I've aliased this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste a uh, a query in here that is basically going to just do some transformation and that transformation is not really going to be that interesting hence the copy and paste so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this query ID and uh, put it in here I'm just going to result scan um, essentially what's going on is just a little bit of data prep you know um, we're extracting values like customer, due date, invoice date, um, often getting the first value because it is, um, you know, as you can see in the customer, um, it is an array. Uh, so we just want the first value for some of those, uh, you know, changing the dates to dates, uh, doing a bit of data cleansing, getting rid of commas, getting rid of uh, dashes, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm getting the line items out separately um, I'm using a lateral flatten because there'll be multiple line items, of course, um, and I'm just getting the index of each of these that will you know, get, get those multiples. Um, and then uh, what I'm doing is I'm turning the line items into a JSON object and I'm joining them back. Okay, so let's run this. And here we are. That looks pretty good to me. This is the data we have extracted from EDS. Um, so as you can imagine, you could put this query here, you could uh, take it and put it inside a dynamic table. Um, you could maybe put it inside a stock procedure, uh, maybe in a DBT model, uh, build, put it into to something like Data IQ perhaps. There's all sorts of things you can, you can do with this. Um, so this is an incredibly, incredibly powerful bit of functionality. Um, and now the the world of unstructured data it has met the world of data engineering, um, which you know, as a data engineer, I'm very, very excited about. Thank you very much for watching this video on Document AI. If you liked it, found it useful, enjoyed it, then please do like and subscribe to this channel. Um, and yeah, I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you very much.